Great. Google it, Moogly. Heavens the Mugator. Okay, so it looks like we are live. Greetings and welcome. This is episode two of the official Vedic Astrology Podcast, hosted by your two favorite Gemini in the entire universe, Travis Magus, and of course, Kristen Chambers, the greatest Vedic astrologer of our current time. <laughs> so, as you guys know, we talk about all types of things, occult, but not just hocus pocus and spooky and trying to impress you, but in such a way to help garner an understanding and those who want to learn more about the occult and how to utilize these techniques for themselves. So in this particular segment, the Vedic Astrology Podcast, we're talking about things related to Vedic Astrology and how you can utilize these astral energies in your life, how to adjust what you're doing in the physical plane to align with the flow, with the powers that be, so that you're in alignment and not blocking things. Specifically, there's a lot to be said about how the ancient practice of feng shui ties into all this. Absolutely. And those of you who uh, keep up with the moon phases, you know that right now we are uh, still within bounds of the new moon. Last time we did this, which was two weeks ago, it was a full moon. So this is a good time for planting seeds for new things. Yes, absolutely. The, this new moon is presently in Pernervasu in Gemini, which Pernervasu is a representation of the return to the light. Um, and before Pernervasu, we visit Ardra. And we could tell what's coming up, you know, with the last couple of um, nakshatras that the moon visits. So with Ardra, we have the storm. And what does the storm do? The storm picks up the old and throws it off. It clears away a path. It pulls things up by the roots. It tears it up and cleans it away. It's the storm and it's dark and it's murky and it makes you sleepy and it makes you stressed and it's overwhelming. But once it's passed, the light has come back. And this is what is, this is, what is represented by this full, um, new moon today. It is the end of the eclipse season. And so this new theme is wrapped around the new things that are coming forth for us. So with Ardra, with the eclipse season, we had lots of disruption, lots of turning things up and getting rid of things that are not serving us and being shown things that are not serving us and how to deal with them in a timely manner. And now is the time to move forward. So things that have been holding us back, things that have been in our path or in our way or slowing down, all of that is going to now move forward. We're going to be able to move forward and see things in a way we weren't able to see them before, especially since we have an opposition uh, from this new moon with Pluto in Sagittarius. Sagittarius is all about, I believe, right? I believe. And so our ability to learn and believe things in a different way, that's what's going to happen. People are going to have a change of mind. Things that come to fruition or that we learn are going to make us change how we think and how we react in this world. This is a welcome thing. We've been, we've been waiting for the change basically since last December when this huge alignment was coming with Jupiter and Saturn, right? We knew there's this big conjunction, all this big change comes. Every month it's talking about this big change. It's like, when the hell is the change? When is it going to really come forward? We've been in the process of the change now since last December, even November. When is it happening? Well, this right here is now the moving forward period. We are still in retrograde with Jupiter and Saturn till October. However, July 20th, we have Jupiter moving into Danishta, which is, you know, a pretty um, wealthy 
and fame struck nakshatra. So it's not all bad. There's a lot of good things that still can happen in a retrograde, as we know. But most of the storm has now passed. Most of the harshness of the last year has passed, has pulled behind us. This has a lot to do with also healing. So many people are going to learn things about themselves that bring forth the healing, not just in, in mind, but also in body. They might learn something about their bodies that they need to change or that they need to fix or heal. And the healing will come. The healing will come. That's the thing about Pranavasu is this light leads to a healing. It leads to better things. It's not a false light. So it's a good thing that's on the horizon. All these fantastic things to look forward to. Wow. I mean, that's splendid news, right? It, it definitely is. And well, we also have a trine up with Neptune. So this is going to, this tells us that there is some things around deception or illusion, things that we're not sure of, or we're, we're they're hidden from us, things we don't understand that are going to come to the light. This is something I've been talking about all year about even some kind of um, things around. I know it sounds spooky and woo woo, but alien, you know, intelligence or otherworldly intelligence being talked about in the media. This is going to happen more and more there. People are not going to believe it at first, but they're going to start spilling the beans about this, whether it's really government or not, or aliens or not there's going to be a talk about it. I mean, this current season of Fortnite is all about aliens and alien abduction. Wow. I don't really know much about Fortnite. I should get into it. <laughs> That's not there nor there. I'm just adding yeah. commentary. No, but but you're you, you're right though. It it affects us each individually in different ways. So whether it's the media or a video game we're playing or or work, these topics will come up. Definitely, they will come up. Um, let me see, I wrote something else down. Oh yeah, so what's what are some of the good things that we could do during this upcoming month to facilitate some growth in our own self? Well, anyone that is of equal stature or someone that you find a common ground with, Look to them for some insight and also share some insight. Do some mutual exchanges of energies or teachings or, or goods, you know, give and you will be given, you know, things will come, you know, to you just as you give. But um, this is a great time for learning. Anything that, that you want to learn right now, this is a time to do it because the belief systems are changing, which means the minds are open. The light is being let in. So people are not so frigid, not as much as they were last year. Like that people were willing to kill you for their belief systems. Yeah. That was what that energy was. Now people are like, they're seeing that it's not what they thought. They're seeing things are not what they believed they were. And more people, whether it's in mainstream or their personal lives, they're going to be open to new things. So this is a time when you want to, Take that class, learn that subject, do that meditation, go the extra mile and read that book. Those things that you do during this month and forward are going to be absorbed better. They're going to be taken and you're going to really be able to understand them. That's probably my favorite news of this whole thing. Yeah, absolutely. And you know what? You, you might find yourself, whether it's your siblings or a best buddy or a friend or me and you, Trav, you know, someone that's of equal or someone you really connect with, you'll probably find yourself bouncing off each other and, le and like trying to, to learn or create something. Or even if you get some creative um, inspiration from them, even if you're not working directly with them, that's going to come even through your siblings or a child, your parents someone you feel a closeness to or a connection with a camaraderie, they could be of really, you know, really good help. And that's the helpful people that we talked about last time um, coming into our lives right now. So it's a good time to also travel. Lots of things around travel will be opening back up. You know, it's been, we've been on lockdown per se for how long. 
So more things are going to be opening up and going back to the way they were, sort of, with this return to light. So you'll, you're going to see people going back to Disney World, going back to the places that were empty last year. There's going to be a lot of traveling happening, a lot of things on the road, people going to and fro. So communication, you know, Gemini, it's all about Gemini and what that represents. These things will be coming back to the light since we are out of the storm. I love it. Yeah. Wow. So yes, Ardra and Punar Vasu are both nakshatras that are within the constellation of Gemini. Is that correct? Yes. So and Punar Vasu is the end of Gemini and the beginning of Cancer. The end of Gemini and the beginning of Cancer. So what we're yes. talking about here basically is the position of the moon, right? And traditionally in uh, Western astrology, we've got the 12 zodiac, uh, but in Vedic astrology, it's broken down into roughly what, two and a half nakshatras per sign? Yes. Give or take? Yes. And currently yep. where the moon is, it's, and we're going off the sidereal chart, right? So this is in the Western chart, tropical. Right. And where the position of the moon is, it is transitioning from the middle decan of Gemini and it's going down into Gemini Cancer. And like you said, that's Punar Vasu. And what you've been describing so far are the descriptions of what the weather's like when the moon is in Punar Vasu, correct? Yes, yes. And not just the physical weather, although the physical weather represents it absolutely, but our emotional weather because the moon remember is our emotions, right? It's our mind. And like we spoke about uh, briefly when so-called negative, and I'm using the air quotes, negative things are abound or you see them in your chart and you're expecting them when you are operating from a higher resonance from non-attachment from non-fear based mindsets you will find yourself being pulled to sleep these days. Like instead of having ex experienced these so-called harsh effects, you might find out that you're, 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 you're sleeping 12 hours, 15 hours that day. And you don't understand why am I sleeping all day? Well, it's because the, you're not resonating at the lower level where you're going to be experiencing these so-called negative effects. So instead you go to sleep. You're literally like resting, recharging, and you might have all kinds of lucid dreams and messages that come through during these times. So Ardra and Mula and Kritika, Barani, you know, some of these nakshatras are not um, favorable sometimes, but it doesn't always mean that you're going to experience it on a physical level. You might end up just be pulled to sleep. So, and that's personally what happened with me. And I know you said it happened with you. So well, I'm interested to see how many other people experienced it. Because I know there's people in my Facebook group who said that they felt the same. They were just extremely tired or weak, just felt like they were drained. But we also can't forget Mars is still in cancer. And, you know, Mars, the soldier, doesn't like to be inside the mama, the house of the mama. So it drains the energy a little bit. But we've been dealing with that already over a month. So you got that effect, then you get Ardra coming in, and it's like, okay, maybe some people should just go to sleep. And that's what tends to happen. Some people, you know, experience disruptions in their life, and some just end up going to sleep. And this is something I've experienced myself for a few years. I've noticed where I was expecting, oh, this weekend's going to be shitty from what my transits say. And then I end up sleeping the whole weekend. Yeah. I'm like, wow. Yeah. I noticed that with me as well. And I think a good way to kind of, um, I guess if I could explain it in my words from what you're saying here is we're talking about the astral weather, we're talking about the emotional weather. Yes. And by the movement and the positioning of where <laughs> things are in the sky, there's a description of effects that are predictable and really I would say a lot of it would depend on your attachment to 
the things and the situations in your life. And if you've got a very deep level of attachment, a very uh, dense level of attachment to where you're easily triggered by everything, right? When this weather changes and moves, it's going to pull you to and fro. It's not going to lightly nudge you. It's going to pull you, right? So people who are very, very attached densely like that, they're going to be affected more intensely because they're attached more intensely. And those who we could say have raised their vibration, those who are able to see life through a perspective where they're not deeply triggered by the events in life to where they're able to see things in such a way from a perspective of understanding right knowing that like yes is. and um when the weather might be inclement or or bad weather instead of them being dragged into a situation oftentimes they're kind of uh moved out of the way of that situation yes so you and me that might be a day where we fall asleep for 15 hours even though we weren't tired previously like what just happened two days ago it's just crazy how you and i have like the same things happen on the same days but yeah, I, yeah, I know it's crazy real quick i want to say greetings to everybody here in the chat greetings greetings what's good jimma thorn peace amar alkamaya Wayne M, Straight Panther, Sky L, Peace, Peace, Serious Suit, Triple Eight, Greetings, Purple Butterfly, Peace, Tree Marie, Good to see you, Unbalanced Libra, Peace, Ryan Morrow, 7-7, seven, seven, Madman, Peace, Bro, Mo B, Peace, Hood Mystic, Welcome, Welcome, Secret to the Sacred Serpent, Greetings, Bro, Oh yeah, Don't let me forget anybody, but yeah, Welcome, Welcome, Thank you guys for hanging out with us. Of course, we're talking about Vedic astrology and the current weather, right? And I'm not talking about the storm outside. Well, some of us on the East Coast are going through a storm. I don't know. I don't watch the news. I just know it's about that time and the power went out last night. So Gabby- Yours went out last night? That's funny. Yeah. My neighbors went out two nights ago. Mine went out last night while I was playing Fortnite, but it wasn't a dub, so it was cool. That is just funny. Greetings, Regina. Um, Wayne M., the moon is sidereal. We are talking sidereal. It is in Gemini in Purnavasu, which is the last nakshatra of Gemini that moves into Cancer. But it is in, the new moon is in Gemini, sidereal, Purnavasu. Yes. Greetings, Shango. Greetings, D. Knight. Greetings, DIY Simple Arts and Crafts Ideas. I hope y'all are having a great evening, right? Despite the storm that just passed, life is good. It is. The storm is over with, right? The ground is fertilized. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know. You don't have to go to school the next day. All kinds of great things come after a storm, at least in my opinion. I sleep great during a storm, so. Same. Don't celebrate. You're right. Think about that. After a real messed up storm, everyone's excited, right? Because there's no school the next day. So, and you know what? That's all about Pernervasu. That's all about that. Think about that. There's the storm, which is like spooky, scary, kind of exciting. I love storms personally. I'm like into watching the intensity. And then it's what comes next. You know, the after a harsh snowstorm is no school. Yay. And it's usually sunny that day. It just seems to be. And then you go out sled riding. So, and that's, that's, that is a representation of Pernivasu right there. That child elation of, oh, no school. Yay. There's a big storm yesterday. That's it right there. A good representation of that. Yeah. And I like what you were saying about these uh, changing and learning something new. Um, yes. I know for myself, I'm certainly, uh, Dealing with my TikTok being deleted. So oh, they put me on a whole new train of thought. We put a lot mm -hmm. of you and I both put in a lot of work in this endeavor, you know. Yeah, yeah, it feels kind of you know disheartening a bit, but yes, I transformed that into something workable. And um, mm -hmm. right now, I'm focused on building my own app, yes, so that I can deliver the content that I want without being censored and blocked and shit like that i think mm -hmm. it's like 
I heard people talking about it, you know, oh, they're blocking me and they took this channel down, they're deleting videos. And I heard about that and I always figured, you know what I'm saying, on a level, that's kind of just conspiracy stuff. Yeah. But, you know, you're overreacting maybe. I always kind of had that in my head, I guess because it never happened to me. Right. right. But then I see it. You yeah. Know? And, you know, that, here's what I was thinking also. A lot of times you get things like that that happen to people and they want to go and start this like, you know, argument and like, they should let us do this. They should let us talk this way. They, mm -hmm. should, they should call us what we want to call ourselves. They should allow us to do this. But to me, that's the wrong battle. It How is. You go into someone else's house and demand them to change their rules for you. Yes. That's, that's immature. That's an immature mind. So, I agree. Instead of me like trying to be like, let's ban TikTok, let's cancel them for what they did. No, <laughs> they have every right to do what the fuck they want. It's their app. Yep. So I'm going to take all of my energy and I'm going to invest it in my own app. So yes. I don't have anybody to beg to change any kind of rules and none of that shit. Right. And that's why that happened. When I was sitting here thinking what, that night when we were both like, what the hell? And they took all, they erased all our stuff. And I'm like, I'm mad at first. Remember what I said? I'm like, you know what? I'm not even tripping. I'm going to just use this to direct myself now what to what I really want to do, which is YouTube. And that's what I felt. I felt like I heard it in my head being told to me, this is happening because it's directing you towards where you should be. Right. You're not supposed to stay at TikTok. Right. This was just an experiment. You've got the feeling now. Now move your ass over to YouTube <laughs> or do what you're supposed to do now. Right. And I heard, I felt like Saturn was saying that, especially because how Saturn is right now in his retrograde. Yeah. He's going to really redirect and put things in your way when you're not supposed to be at a certain spot. Nope, nope, not there. Turn and look over here. So I'm like, okay, okay. All right. <laughs> yeah. It's crazy, though, to see your almost a million um, likes to go to zero. And I'm like, what? What happened? Oh, my God. Kristen, in like <laughs> one or two weeks, I didn't pay for no traffic. I didn't do no kind of buy no follow none of that shit and like one to two weeks i got just as many followers as i have on instagram within like See? A few days right isn't it crazy with like 17 no i got to eighteen thousand likes it was in like a week or two like, yep i've only been on that for three weeks but i was only yep. getting serious within that last week or so and the numbers Same. were rising up so fast <laughs> like, oh, hell no so i we know were, or you know what i'm saying i was on to something you but, were the, you know, all the stuff we put into it all the time. And, and on it, on it as an experiment too, we were testing the waters. Yeah. yeah. And then for them to just take off like they did, I feel like it was saying, yes, social media videos. It is for you. Just not this platform. Don't, mm -hmm. don't, don't stay on this platform. So, cause there's so many restrictions. And what I want to do is like, I can't. So I'm like, okay, I, I have to figure out. And then, you know, with your app that we were talking about, you know, we have to make what we want have to have happen because if it's not already there and we want, there's a need for it, then we, we're the ones that were supposed to make it. Yeah. Yeah. So astrologically speaking, because that happened uh, right on the 4th of July. Yeah. Do you recall what was going on around that time? Um... Or at least what, what, what has been in the mix? Because that wasn't too long ago. That was about five days One, ago. Two, three, four, yeah, that happened. Oh, no, yeah. This is when um, we started moving towards Ardra. So right. that's when I'm, all this stuff started going ziggity-boo around that time. And, I, you know, it's interesting because it was a lot of things to do with, with storms, affecting communication and i kept thinking this isn't mercury retrograde what the hell but everything's in gemini so and that's communication still it's still ruled by mercury and then we got this ardra aspect so there's storms galore all over the place so storms and heat and weather affecting the electricity in the house but also communications which has you know tick tock you know and for whatever reason you know, it happened to TikTok and not YouTube, whatever. But um, 
I feel like TikTok is even more Gemini energy than, than YouTube. YouTube is, but TikTok is that fast, which is Mercury, that back and forth, fast movement, boom, 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 fast info. So it makes so much sense that it happened on TikTok. Plus, there was all this talk about hacking happening and um, uh, attacks on, um, um, what is that word? Not spyware. Do you know what I'm talking about? Um, cyber attacks. I couldn't say it right. Cyber attacks and that McAfee guy, all that kind of stuff happening. So there was a lot of stuff around com communication and disruption and, and, and stormy energy and just chaos. But now we have this energy from the new moon of a return to the light. So, and we're going to be learning things that um, were hidden from us during COVID. That's going to be coming out too. Like things about the truth about where it came from, how it was created, all that kind of stuff. So, but, you know, that's, you know, more mainstream, but there's, there's just going to be a lot of room for growth now most of us that really paid attention to what the lessons were these last couple months are are ready and the people that um had karma to pay have been paying it or have paid it already or they're paying it out still and then there's people that are reaping good and bad you know they're they're, they're finally getting ahead because they've worked their ass off and they've been doing what they're supposed to so now is the time that we're gonna see lots of things move forward, lots of it. And especially after October, because that's when um, both of the big guys come out of their retrograde, Jupiter and Saturn. That'll be nice. In the chat, Hood Mystic said that Saturn is in exaltation. Yes. Saturn loves to be in its own, you know, its own, uh, in Capricorn, Saturn being, and we talked about uh, when Jupiter goes in retrograde into Capricorn, which is usually debilitated, but Saturn's sitting there, it kind of, it takes away the harshness of it. So that's always a good thing. I personally am excited for July 20th when Jupiter reaches Danishta. I have a feeling that's going to be a really good day in the stock market. Yeah. So that's the 20th? Yeah. The 20th, yes. I have to tell my brother. He does all that stuff. Yeah, tell him to keep an eye out for AMC because AMC is in its Jupiter Dasha. And anytime Jupiter is in a, um, a significant movement or aspect, it goes up. So keep an eye out. Keep an eye out. <laughs> I sent you um, <clears throat> last night because I was I was reading through the Necronomicon, Gates of the Necronomicon to be exact. I forgot. There's a lot of good stuff in that book. But um, one thing that he said that kind of stuck out to me was that um, uh, sidereal astrology was astrology for the astral plane. And I, at first that sounded kind of silly, but then I started to think about it. And I kind of related to what you were saying in comparison Western astrology to sidereal. <laughs> Say that, I'm sorry, say that again, repeat that. Which part? The, the little end, it broke out. I couldn't hear what you were saying. The whole end there. Donks. After you said that you sent me, and then it broke up. Okay. Um, yeah, so I was reading The Gates of the Necronomicon, and I was, uh -huh. where he was talking about sidereal astrology. And in his estimation, he was saying that sidereal astrology could be considered astrology for the astral Mm -hmm. where western astrology would be terrestrial and like yes. I, said, I thought that was kind of like maybe a bit woo but the more i started thinking about it it kind of related to what you were explaining about two weeks ago yes um when it, as above so below is how you as it. above so below yeah the physical the the literal the manifestations which comes which come through the sun because it's solar based that's tropical but then the mind the subconscious the spirit the higher, the higher, high magic and all that, that's the moon, which is Vedic. So it's like your, your physical ego avatar, the sun, solar, your mind, your thoughts, your spirit, your 
some people will even say karma. I've heard someone say that, but your spiritual journey. So they both are you and they both have a representation of you and they both are valid because just like you are a son, a brother, a father, this is the same. You are solar and lunar. You are left and right. You are masculine and feminine. All of that. Rahu and Ketu. This is, that's what it is. It is two halves of one whole. <laughs> As above, so below. It's the sidereal zodiac and the tropical <laughs> zodiac, where the stars and moon are, and then where the sun travels. Yeah, that, that makes sense. So yeah. it should be used together. It should be used in tandem as opposed to this yeah. better than that. Right. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Like when we look at where this came from in the East, we have both the Ida and the Pingala. Yes. Right. We're talking about the Nadis and the channels of energy here, how we've got this middle channel called the Sushumna and everyone that's talking about chakras and opening your chakras. And this is happening to that central channel. We've all seen the picture of <clears throat> the guy sitting there meditating with little serpents going around his wand. Well, those serpents have names. And they also represent uh, specific patterns of your individual energetic makeup. One is lunar and one is solar. One deals more with your mental energy. One deals more with your uh, physical life force. Another one that deals with the physical life force, that relates to the sun. And that would be called Pingala. And the other one deals with the moon, that's called Ida, masculine and the feminine. But you can't just choose one to work with. Right, they they have to be yeah. with, with together. So in the microcosm, in the individual, it's represented as those two serpents, and when they work together, they unlock that third channel of balance, that middle pillar. Yes, that's when you're able to consciously open your chakras and yes. the prana that is behind all the little magic that we're talking about. But it all has to be done together, not one over the other. You don't choose to open your third eye and then everything else. Yeah, it's all together. So likewise, one of the big reasons that we've been lately focusing on Vedic astrology is because, you know, Kristen is an expert at it, but it, it, it's not to prove that this is better than Western tropical, but there's another side of the coin. There's another yeah. serpent on this tree. And if we work yes. with both of them, so much can be revealed. Something new opens up. Yes. That's yes, true. that's absolutely that's absolutely true. Something from Infinite greetings, while Brazil greetings. Yes, something that I see happening a lot, especially on TikTok between the astrologers, mm -hmm. they attack each other. There are they call the Vedic astrologers will dog and say it's Starbucks astrology uh, <laughs> that tropical is. And then the tropical will call the sidereal trolls because all they do is troll and they don't, they don't really resonate. It just, they go back and forth. And I'm like, this is, this is the problem with doing, this is the problem with doing these spiritual practices with having a limited insight on the self, on what it all means, on the connectiveness of all things. Because if you're coming from the ego, right? You're only going to see oh, my, my kind's better. My half is better. You're only going to see from this limited, separate idea. You're gonna, this is better. That's wrong. You're not able to be open and see that it's all one. It's all part of one thing. You don't really understand it at the deep level. You, you, may, have, you may be good at the textbook meaning of all of it, but you still have a big missing part when you are sitting there saying, that's bullshit. That ain't true. This is wrong. And I, I, someone was saying that the Western was, um, the uh, what she say? Oh, she went in. She said it's racist and that it was. It's racist. Oh, colonized. And she said that it was raped from her people. But th then, I, of course, I just I didn't I didn't get into it because it's not you know my part to. And everyone comes to their knowing at their own time. But she she yeah, didn't right. even know her own her own. Um, beginning. She didn't know the history of her own practice. Like she didn't even know that it, anything about the um, Aryan Indians, obviously, otherwise she wouldn't have said what she said because those are the people who was writing the Vedas. That's Absolutely. where what I'm seeing is it's when, when I, when I see those instantly, I yeah. know it's not the Vedic and it's not the Western. It's the people 
It is. And this is this is what these people do. They they go into the spiritual stuff and they take it and they wear it like a a sheep's clothing over a wolf, yeah. and they use it as a weapon. Now they're just using it to attack somebody else, or, or using it to externalize some internal problem they have. And they're using. How the hell can astrology be racist? It's a <laughs> system of numbers. What yeah. Exactly. And and that's just a lack of not understanding the other system either. Lack because you yeah, a lack of data. And the, the the thing is, is the truth is initially the Vedic system was um, you know, it, it was all about travel. That's why they used the stars. Where were you? The Greeks started implementing the reading of people, not just the king, but people and their personal charts. So, and it implemented outward from there, but it, it all, yes, it all originated, originated, you know, from the Vedic areas, but initially it was all about travel. This is where the stars come from. Cause you use the stars to find out where the hell you're going. Right. So this is how we ended up moving down to the tropical because the physical aspect of the human and if you just learn it all, don't be closed minded. You would see, oh, OK, it's just an extra part of the same system. That's it. It's yeah. just another divisional. There's no reason to get all hippity dippity about it. But see, this is this goes back to what we we're saying. Attachment. When you when you come up learning one type, you got this attachment. And as soon as you hear that other thing, your first instinct is, oh, mine's better. No, nah, yours is wrong. Yeah. Let me show you how mine is right. right? Yeah. And like you said that's coming from ego not because yeah. someone wants to um correct some information that might be wrong that's not ego what we're talking about is what happens before these people open their mouths before they set their little grubby fingers to type they got triggered somewhere yeah and it's really in an effect to prove that they are valid in what they spend all their little time getting attached to but it's never yeah. coming from a constructive place mm -mm. That's the truth. And it's just like with magic. Oh, I do hoodoo. Oh, I'm a Celtic witch. Oh, I do green witch. Oh, I'm this. Oh, no, you're not that. You're not a chaos magician. You don't know what you're talking about. Oh, I do high magic. Because, nah, you, know. you can't do that in a ritual. You yep, have, that's have not allowed. <laughs> you're, not, you're not initiated, so you can't invoke that entity. Yep. You're not no. supposed to do it that way. This is all human shit. That's all ego human shit. It is. Right. Wow, and Brazil, peace. What's Relative interesting that I have come to find out is you find out the things that you're not like, for example, when it comes to the inner alchemy or the Kundalini rising, I'm, I'm presently talking to uh, somebody about this who um, read some of my older posts about the, the physical process of it, mm -hmm. which was part of um, a series which went into the spiritual aspect too like it doesn't just happen like that it's not like a physical thing i'm gonna go try yoga i'm gonna go try inner alchemy it's you don't get to just do that it, it's a hard process for a reason i'm gonna try um, it. yeah because and i explained why it was hard if, if we were able to just unlock all these things but still pull in low vibe shit into our body we would create a hell for ourselves when you're manifesting really easily and then you're like eating death or saying, doing bad things, you're going to manifest some fucked up shit for you. So it's not something that's just simple or done easily. It's a, you need discipline. You need to give your, it's a lifestyle. It's a whole thing that you have to decide to put your everything in. It's not just something I'm going to try on the weekend or, oh, I've been abstinent three months and I've been vegan, so I'm going to do it. That's not, that's not how it works. Yeah. Nothing will happen. Uh, we're looking at. You, yeah. You know, approach that's incorrect so people are approaching this like everything else you know oh i want to try you know i want to try this yeah. hobby i want to try this hobby i'm going to yeah. try this gender i'm going to try this but misunderstanding that this isn't something to try this is uh it's actually a system of development of yeah. deep inner development so it, it's really unlike anything else so you know understandably it, it's easy to get misconstrued but of course. hopefully in the person's attempt to trying it, they find something that is within them that causes them to want to push beyond the, 
hurdles. Yeah. Because there will be hurdles. There's always hurdles. And that's what we see the difference in the measure of a man or a woman is that when they yeah. come to hurdles, do you turn around and go back to the trash that you came from? Or do you do you get that extra ounce of spirit, of soul, and push? Yeah. That's what this whole process is. Exactly. Rising, it's not, a, it's about recognizing, okay, this is my ego talking here, or this is my, this is attachment. This is me being triggered. This is me trying to be, trying to follow a fad. Why am I really doing this? Yeah. Do I want superpowers or is there something more about this? That process of inner questioning, you know, that, that's that little voice. Because of course, the average person doesn't think that way. They don't think, oh, this is my ego or, you know, oh, I, I'm attached to this or I'm being triggered. The average mind is, is very uh, dull. It's not sensitive. It's dull. Yeah. But the voice of soul, the voice of spirit, it's so unique that even a very dense and dull person can recognize that that voice is a little bit different than everything else. You know, that yeah. frequency of soul and spirit, that's different from animal hunger, different from animal lust, yeah. different from the voice of ego. It's a different voice. So even a very dull person, if they've got even just a little bit of refinement, they can hear that voice. And depending on their inner strength, they choose to follow it. Or... Maybe they choose to follow it a little bit later, but it's, it's literally a process of development, you know? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. It absolutely is. It definitely is. Like you were saying, so, powers, you know? Yeah, yeah absolutely. That, that's why you, you don't get to, you know, you don't get to just do it or activate it because you want to, you know, you, you have to do it right. That's the thing is you have to do these things right. And for the right reasons for anything to really for you to get anything out of it, you have to. And if you're not, you know, willing to be disciplined in a few areas of a lifestyle, it's a lifestyle thing. It's not something I'm going to do it for a couple of months. And I'm going to go back to that old way. No, that's something you're just not going to be able to do that. It's not how it works. You don't get to take six months out of the year, try it out and then go back. This is a, you know, things like, um, the inner alchemy, it's, it's a, a dedication. It's a lifestyle change from this point on. What's the point if you're going to go back to do whatever? What is the point? And if you need all these plant medicines, if you need to do mind-altering substances, which you can't do that if you're going to try to activate that oil. That, I got people saying, but, but what if? I'm like, if you will still want to do that, that's fine. But you're not going to activate that oil in you if you're taking that. So if you still want to, do it. Fine. But they're, they, everyone looks for, well, maybe they'll just, maybe, maybe I can get away with them. Like, no, that's not how it works. Yeah. It's not how it works. Either you're going to do it or you're not. And it's not about, it's not about a rule. It's about a physical reaction that will only take place when you're not doing certain things to your body. Right. When you're putting your body in it, a state that is akin to its most natural state. Because we're yep. not in the natural state in our everyday lives. The food that we eat, the air we breathe, drinking tap water, you know what I'm saying? Like all the different, it's, it's never one thing. It's not just giving up meat because there's a bunch of sugar, right? Exactly. It's, yeah. sugar. it's, you know, all the sex and the, the, the mismanagement of energy, right? I'm not going to yeah. say wasting or, or nothing moralistic. The mismanagement of energy, right? Exactly. Metals in the body, um, the not taking any time to be still or fast or purge or anything. Mm -hmm. It's all these things added together. But when you come into a certain stage in your life where you take this spiritual growth seriously and you you start with the foundation because it's not the herbs by themselves. It's yeah. not fasting or not eating meat or going vegan by themselves. It's not meditation by itself. But when you start incorporating more of these practices into your life with dedication, you'll find that your body starts to change its rhythm, right? Yeah. Because when you're on a funky ass rhythm, you get a funky uh, outcome. If you eat McDonald's every day or any fast food every day, right? Yeah. Heavy sugar or alcohol or anything. And we make excuses. Oh, it's just a drink. Oh, I'm not addicted. Or, oh, I just smoke mm -hmm. a little bit of weed. You know, it's, it's medical or, or whatever. You know what I'm saying? It's high grade. Yeah. Whatever 
excuse we want to give ourselves, you know what you're doing, right? Most everyone here is an adult. You know what you're doing. And you know what you're doing. But the thing is, at the end of the day, it's nothing external. It's all yes. something about you has to make a decision to say, you know what? I'm interested in becoming the absolute best version of myself. I'm interested yes. in reaching my potential. I don't know what it is. I don't exactly know how to get there, but I want it. And I'm willing mm-hmm. to learn whatever it takes to get there. You, you, you don't grow until you, you click that switch, until you press that button. And you can't force anybody. I tried, right? I, I tried. Exactly. Most people who said, yeah, man, I'm, I want to be woke, man. I want to know about this stuff. But after about 30 seconds, you see them eyes glaze over. And now we're talking about the game or uh, what Cardi B or whatever. These little rappers, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? The, the switch has to click. Yeah. Yeah. And the inner, al- the inner alchemical process is a physical representation of what's happening in the spirit. So you may be just messing around in the physical thinking you're doing something, but if you don't do the inner work, none of that shit is working. You might think it is, you might believe because you've been vegan and celibate, all this is happening. No, you know when it's really happening. There's a, there's a difference in every aspect of you. Mm-hmm. And that's why only some actually reach it. If it was, If everyone was doing it, you know, the world would be way different. So it takes a whole lot of discipline. It takes a lot. Yeah, yeah. See, that relates to what I was talking about as far as dull and fine or dull and refined. Yeah. Just like, um, you know, jewelry. When You can go get a ruby from off Amazon rough, and it looks like a red rock. That's dull. It's, it's not something that you would sell for a couple thousand dollars. But mm-hmm. when you get a professional who takes that dull rock, and they begin to go through the process of cutting it, of sanding it, smoothly, humbling it, and really bringing out its potential. Because underneath all that roughness is a uh, ruby that you see on the little rings that cost a lot of money. But it doesn't come that way. It has to be go through a process of refinement. Most of us are rough, right? That's, you, you can say, yeah, everybody's God. Everybody's got God potential. It's true. But you're dull and you're rough. You have to go through the refinement process of cutting away the dirt and the grime and the crust that's been accumulated for thousands of births, mm-hmm. right? Birth, millions of lives, millions of years. You gotta go through the process of smoothing all that away. And when you start to go through that process, you're able to perceive different layers of what's going on around you. Science will tell you that we only see a small fraction with our senses. We can only see within a very tiny range Excuse of reality. Excuse me, red circle. We can only 10, hear. 10,000 hertz, pineal gland, third eye activation. 10,000 hertz, result. right? We can only taste within a certain frequency range. We got five senses, mm-hmm. which are actually sensors. And they can, only t- they can only sense in a very tiny range. But reality is more than that. And we can sense more than that, right? And even mm-hmm. what we're describing here with the astrology, this, this is what one of the things that we're sensing, one of the things that we're feeling. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Shango had a question <laughs> for you a bit earlier. Yes. Shango. But yeah, this process of refinement is what yoga is all about, what what the Vedic information talks about. And again, this is not a religion. This is not anything that you gotta commit to and be initiated to. This is literally a science that you can follow, tested experiments and get specific results. Mm-hmm. I'm not wearing this because it looks cool. I'm right. Because it serves a purpose. And it's a, it serves as a level of focus for, for an object of focus. But, you Absolutely. know, you come to that place, you come to that place. Exactly. I'm thankful. Um, I know that Jingo had a question. I mm-hmm. also think that Lucifer had a really good, he asked if we could speak on addiction. I think that's a really good topic to implement because it it we could see this through the chart addiction so that could be something we talk about um for next time i could put together something if you would like if that sounds like um something many people would like to talk about or go into it's something that i think it's important because if we read our children's charts and we see that this could be a situation they say by by reading 
these things, it cancels it by 60%. So it's good to know, right? It'll be good to um, have an insight into the um, things like that. So I think that could be something we talk about next time. Greetings, Eon. Greetings, Shoot Dakini. Greetings, Cody Hill. Greetings, Jay Reap Music. Greetings, greetings, Rod Israel. Welcome, welcome. Addiction. Okay, so I I don't know if people remembered to um, take a look and get the, a compass reading for their for their homes. For last time, we talked about the Bagua that we were going to go into it a little bit today. Um, but you needed to um, either get your uh, well first. You want to lay out of your house or the place you live, even if you could just draw it out. But it's really important. To, you have to have a compass reading and an accurate compass reading, like stand outside of your front door and get a reading from there, stand outside of your back door, all the way around the house, get the best reading that you can get a, um, you can use your phone, they say, but it's probably better to use uh, an old fashioned compass, a real compass. So you get um, um, an understanding of what direction your home is in. Um, it's it, this is important because this is how we get the reading because it's not you can't just superimpose one bagua over everyone's house because there's everyone's natal chart for the house is at a different time just like everyone's birth chart is different it's the same thing you literally cast a natal chart for the house the bagua chart and it it depends on the period of when you moved in now, um, some old schools of thought would use when the house was built and some others would say when the first occupants moved in. This is, this is similar to doing different kinds of divisional charts, right? So um, you, could do, you could do it to when the house was first built, but that's only gonna be the chart for the house itself. The house is energy. You want to cut to the chase and get to your connection with this house, the house that you're in. So you want to find out, write down what year you moved in. In fact, before we get into this, I'm going to say anyone who doesn't have notes or a pen and paper place to write down and some space to draw, go ahead and get it. Let's take five minutes because you're going to want to get it. Trav, okay. say, yeah, go ahead. Wait, what are you going to say? I was going to say, Trav, maybe you could... Uh, I don't know. <laughs> Get us ready. Say something for five minutes. Shit, I was gonna go grab my paper and pencil. Oh, go ahead. Okay, yeah, go ahead. That sounds good. Do you, um, yeah, go ahead. In fact, I will. Uh, what will I do? What will I do? Oh, okay. I'll ask. I'll answer some questions in the comments while everyone's doing that. How's that sound? That sounds fabulous. Perfect. Perfect. Okay. Um, so you guys, drop me some. Um, Com some questions in the comments something that's not going to take a long time of course but ask me something and i will um respond but also please get pencil paper marker something like that um some drawing paper some line paper anything like that because you're going to want to write down all this stuff that i'm going to tell you we operate cool. from a singular powerful one mind and that yes. one mind when it interacts with five sense dense objective reality it has to undergo well it chooses, it chooses to undergo certain filters right so one of the layers that it crosses is this unconscious barrier this collective conscious unconscious it's all the same mind but the next layer it faces is the subconscious mind right and the subconscious mind it's a direct connection between that one mind and the conscious mind we have. And the conscious mind is only aware of itself in a very, very limited span of a few moments ago and right now and a few seconds in the future. And even below that is five sense awareness. We can smell, taste, touch, hear, see, and feel. Now, most people think that they're that thing and they get inklings. Remember I said that they're dull but sometimes they're, they're sensitive enough to kind of feel that there's something more and they might 
get a nudging from that subconscious mind that thinks it's their subconscious mind. They think that, oh, I'm getting an impulse from my subconscious mind or something told me to do that. No, there's actually a one mind that we're all connected to that it's like an upside down hand. Each individual person is like the tip of a finger, but the higher up we go, it's all connected to one big hand. And that's like the subconscious mind right here right? We talk about group souls and people who reincarnate together and all that type of stuff. It's not the body that reincarnates. It's the subtle body. And the subtle body is attached to that subconscious mind. But that's attached to an arm. And the higher up we go, there is a one thing. And that's why all the synchronicity happens and time moves in such a way that there's a, a, a seeming evolution. But in truth, we're just experiencing the whole body in slices of moments. But everyone thinks that we're this individual, unique, special snowflake. We're all different appendages of the same creature. Yes. I'm going to get pencil and paper now. Yes, pencil and paper. I'm excited to um, bring you guys this information. Um, I'm going to give you a little bit each week because it is overwhelming and it's new, but it's truly a natal chart for your home and implementing this natal chart or your feng shui bagua with your own chart especially the fourth house that'll really help activate some positive energies in your in your life and the the last time we talked about the a basic bagua but we're going we're gonna to actually go right to the original OG Bagua, the classical Bagua, because um, apparently I did a little more digging about um, the old Bagua. I mean, the classical Bagua versus this Western one. Um, the Western one is, is, it's half right. You know, it talks about each corner, it talks about um, whether it's like, the career or the um, of helpful people and the relationships, we're going to cut all that part out because that all depends on your own personal chart. Just like an, it's just like a natal chart, depending on your natal chart will depend on what house says what for you and what kind of energies are in that house. So not everyone's is going to look the same. So I'm going to teach you all how to put forth your own chart individually so where we can actually then forecast what the hell's going on in your own life what's you can walk into a room and say okay so and so is going to get sick because this energy and this energy this number and this flying star is connected which mean we'll get into it but you're going to be able to do that at the end of um i would say maybe six sessions so six of these in a row if we go further, I'll be able, you guys will be able to walk away and give your own selves some uh, insight. You'll be able to read your own homes, Bagua, pretty well and adjust accordingly. Unfortunately, it's really hard to find the proper Bagua. If you write classical Bagua on Google, you will get the Western Bagua. You won't get the right one. Of course, Delora. I appreciate all of you too. I'm about to come to sit on this one. Stay well, There's a Vedic astrology conference in Sedona happening. Diana said that would be amazing. For anyone that doesn't know, um, Witchy Crafter in the chat, that's me. Awesome, awesome. Ooh, in November. Ooh, that sounds fantastic. I think I might be able to. We definitely have to talk. That would be cool. Oh, great. You used the compass. Perfect. Perfect. This is really cool. Um, I love using the flying stars. The flying stars is also uh, classical and it's, it's technical, 
but we're going to get to it. We're going to get to that. Um, it's not as, I mean, it's technical. It's not as terribly technical as Vedic astrology. So, but it's still um, pretty cool. And you can affect your own reality by changing the environment. It's important to always um, change and move around this, the, inner, the, the air in your home because we no longer live outside. So this, the air in the house gets stale and starts to build up static. And then all kinds of things go awry. My house faces the four directions perfectly. Perfect, Cody. Wow, a near drowning. How many times does that happen? Shoot. Wow. I mean, near death experiences absolutely open us up. I can speak from personal experience, but especially with water, um, you hear of all kinds of psychological effects taking place when people like come become close to a near death or drowning, it's like sometimes they end up hearing a voice or unlock some kind of sixth sense. I've heard of this before. A big wave surf. Oh, are you? Oh, beautiful. A big wave surf photographer. Oh my gosh. I'd love to see some of your pictures. Interesting. That's so Neptune in the most Neptune <laughs> type thing. That's water plus photography. That's all Neptune. Do you know um, where Neptune is in your Vedic chart by chance? It's amazing. You did just get Sedona stones today too, Travis. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. <laughs> I thought maybe that was where you got it from. What? Oh, I don't know. I thought maybe she, um, she, that maybe she was the one that sent them. Oh no, somebody different. That what? Wow. <laughs> yeah. And we talked about this just before we got on live. We did. Okay. Okay. <laughs> wow. Man. Okay, so does everyone pretty much have paper and pencil and stuff like that? Just shoot me a yes in the in the in the chat. Of course, shoot absolutely. I'd love to see your pictures. I love um, water photography. Ugh, mooncakes got soggy. <laughs> Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking that everyone pretty much got yes. Okay, well, this is yes. Nobody said yep. Oh, here we Perfect. Go. There we go. The All right, guys, I appreciate it. All right, so um, we are going to start. All right, so get your paper and your pencil ready. Yes. So if you want this information to be applied to you. Otherwise, casually listen and keep it moving. Yeah, absolutely. I know some of you are driving, so you'll be able to. Yes, yeah, so I understand that. And you can always come back onto that. All right. So um, the Bagua, if you guys remember the last one, you know, how we drove. It's like a TikTok board. I mean, a tic-tac-toe board. You could do it like that or you can. Yeah, that's probably the easiest way. It's all the directions with a middle. So you've got north, northwest, northeast, east, west, all that. However, this time, instead of north being on the top, south is going to be on the top. This is the classical Bagua. We're going to implement classical instead of Western for many reasons. Because we need it to be detailed to our own home, right? We Not everyone lives in the same, not everyone's front door is south facing. And that's what Western does. It puts everyone's front door at the south, but not everyone's is. So it, it, it gets all out of whack. 
So um, the top middle square is your south. The top left square is southeast. The top right square is southwest. Okay, hold on, hold on. The top is south. Yes, top, top middle. Right. The top right is southwest? Yes. Okay, top is south, top right is southwest, top left is southeast. East, yes. The Bagua is on top, or the South is on top of the Bagua. Yes, this is just the Bagua. This is um, a different kind of Bagua. We're not, we're not getting to the house part yet. So we're, we first got to have our basic Bagua, and then we're going to do our compass reading and implement that, which will be a second part. We, that's called a facing reading. Actually. Trav, give me two minutes. Take over and talk for a second, okay? Give me two seconds. All right. Uh, so we're about to do this Bagua. Don't ask me how to spell it because I don't know how to spell it. So, yeah. Good stuff. Personally, I'm not an astrology expert. That's why Kristen is here. My expertise deals with the other magical things, such as invocation evocation divination and enchantment which happens to be my favorite one enchantment involves things like mimetic magic mind control and other things then of course we've got evocation which is probably my second favorite that's where we get all the spicy demons and summoning of the goetia which by the way i've been doing some intense studying and i found that there has been a misconception most of us are familiar with nine Goetic kings, but I found that most of the Goetic books, because you know I buy every Goetia book that comes out, I see that most of them are just uh, copying one another, right? You get the same descriptions with not much added. But after doing some research into the origins of the Goetia, I found that there's not nine kings, that that's a broken system. That's right. There's actually, uh, zodiacal astrological completeness to it if you're able to rearrange the uh pieces you'll see that it's a perfect system what's put out in most of these books is not a perfect system there's not nine goetic kings if it's a perfect astrological system then there would have to be 12 goetic kings but we'll get into more of that once the app is released because i'm going to spill all the beans <laughs> But yeah, most of the Goetia books are just copycats. They're just copycats. Because these people aren't doing no research. And I'm they're questionably if they're even working with these spirits. But like I said, I done found some interesting info. And I think that really I can only be getting into this because of like what Alora said, working with Tot with Shooty and shit like that. Because really this is where this all comes from. Each one of these entities belong to one of the Tot was. Everything that we experience, everything that is uh, experientially magical, belongs to the Tatwas. And if you've studied Tatwas, if you've been following along with us, you'll have an understanding of what I mean. The fact that the Tatwas manifest themselves through us, right? Through our senses, through our organs of action. But these things belong to the taught was not to us individually because we're not anything really all right said, Tritaka and Goetia practice are off the chain especially when you meditate on the individual taught was absolutely yes you know um I was just thinking maybe because there uh, there is no um classical Bagua, not a correct one on Google anywhere for people to get. So I, I will explain how to, how to make it here, but maybe that's something you and I could make 
and then make available to people to print out for the next coming weeks for the rest of the study. Okay. I think it'll help greatly because um, I'm trying to implement, see the, this natal chart for the house is going to be all about us working on our fourth house in our charts, the fourth house, also second, second and fourth house, fifth can also be implemented there. So it's, you know how we talked about the 10th house and activating that for our public image? Well, we also want to do the axis, right? If we want the public image, the 10th, we need to also work on the fourth. So you also need to work on that. This is where the feng shui comes in. This is how we're going to implement both and make a balance. So I figure that um, us making one that people can get will help out. But I'm going to explain how to write it out still too right now. Um, so south will be facing up instead of north like most of us think it should be but for whatever reason south is on top southeast is the top left southwest is the top right does everybody have that part yes okay and then so then you should know pretty much how to do the rest of the bagua East is underneath southeast, and underneath east is northeast. Northeast. That sounded weird. Northeast. Northeast. <laughs> northeast. That sounds weird now, doesn't it? <laughs> Said it too many times. Northeast. The bottom middle square is the north, and the bottom right is the northwest. Right above that is the west. Okay, in your squares, you want to leave room to write because there's going to be some things about each square that you want to know. Okay, instead of like last time, how I told you this represents career, this represents relationships, scratch that. You can't implement that until you have your personal reading for your own house. So we're not going to implement that into this bagua because that's not what you do instead we implement first who it represents in the home that's the first step mm -hmm. so the south represents the middle daughter okay and a middle daughter is a single female unmarried over 14 I'm going to write that in the chat. So everyone, middle daughter, single female, unmarried, under 14 in the South. Now the south, the element for the south is fire. Good peppers all of the time, beautiful. Um, the number for the south is nine. These numbers are very important, so you wanna write that down. This is how we get to um, do our readings and find out what energies are, with, are mixing and what that represents for us. The South health wise represents eyes and heart. Alora, I'm going to kind of base this on how fast you write. It seems like typically everyone is aligned with you, it seems. So do me a favor and write okay when you're done writing what you, writing it down. So do it okay in the chat so I can know to, to move forward.
it's important that we write down these things because it all leads to how we discern, how we use this to forecast. It's another form of divination completely. Cool. So far, we've got single female unmarried under 14. That's the middle daughter. Elemental yep. fire, the number of nine. This health wise represents eyes and heart. Yes. What's up, Curve? Hey, Curve. Greetings, Sunshine Mohammed. Greetings, the witch of Nimnosine. Sunshine Chick, greetings. I don't know if I said hello to you yet. Is Alora still there, you think? What's next? Yeah, I'll move on to the next one. Southeast is the next one. And that is the element of wood. And that is represented by the oldest daughter, which is a married female, but not a mother yet, just a married female. And she could technically be any age, although let's hope she's over 14. And the body parts or the health aspects are the butt and the hips in this area. Oh, I spelled that all weird. What'd you say? But I spelled that all weird. My and was another T, so my, my butt has three T's. Oh. <laughs> it's quite BS, so it looks very strange. Okay, so you've got Southeast was is the element of wood, oldest daughter, and a married female without children. And it's represented by the button hits. Think about because when a um, when a woman starts to become into her womanhood, her hips and her her butt starts to widen, her hips start to widen and ready herself for childbearing, although she's not there yet. Okay, perfect. Thanks, Laura. Appreciate it. All right, Southwest, which is the element of Earth. Did I give you the the number four for the Southeast? Did I say that? No. Okay, number four is for Southeast. Sorry about that. Got a good question in the chat here, Kristen. Yeah, what the middle center is east. The middle center. No, the um the middle. The middle left hand square is east. Yeah, I guess that's right. If that's what you meant. What's the other question? If you are in a roommate situation, can we use this chart to configure our bedroom only? Yes, you can. It is ideal to do every space that you touch and live in. But if you're unable to do that and you have a roommate and you can only do your room, at least do that. The places where you are living and able to do, that is the best you can do. And if you can only do your room, then you can only do your room. But if you can uh, venture out farther, that'd be great. But you don't, if it's not possible, at least your room where you spend most time will be in balance. So that's good. Okay, so... Um, Southwest is 
mother of the house. This is an earth element. And the number two, obviously the mother of a house of the house is a married parent. Okay. A married woman who is a parent. This is represented health wise, the stomach, abdomen, and skin because the mother gives birth, the stomach, the area of that, you know, represents mother is the stomach area. Um, you could be a grown adult and moved out into your home, but if you are not a parent yet, you are still just an eldest daughter. Or even if you're unmarried, you could you um you could be a middle daughter. Middle daughter is a single female, unmarried, over 14. So let's say you're not married, no kids, but you have your own home. You would be represented by the middle daughter, not the matriarch, not the mother, because you don't have children yet and you're not married. So you may not really be a middle daughter, but you represent your by the energy of middle daughter because of being single and being unmarried, if that makes any sense. What's the number? Sure. I said two. Southwest is Earth too. Galore says I'm definitely middle daughter. <laughs> the middle of the Bagua is number five. But there is um, no no family correspondence with that. So we will move on to the East. Sheesh. <laughs> the East is the element of wood as well. The number is three and it's represented by the oldest son, which is a married male without children. And the, the health aspect represents the feet. That's the oldest son? The oldest son. And that's a married male without children. So you could go to your parents' house and once you learn this Bagua and you could see stuff that's affecting you in their house. <laughs> Just like your charts, you could see your parents and they, and you could see yourself on their charts. So once you get your house together, Go visit your parents and make sure they ain't got something crazy in your corner. All right. So across from the east, we're going to go to the west. And this is the younger daughter. And the element is... Hold on a minute metal excuse me and it's the west younger daughter metal single female under 14 and it's represented health wise by the mouth and the lungs that's the number seven what was the element metal Mm. Can you do it, the family member, the element, and then the body part? Sure. Well, you could do like, yeah, however it fits for you, however it makes you feel 
So you can do like um, the element on top, then the family member, what it means in the family member, the number to the side or the middle, and then underneath it is the the body part. And then even further, we're going to get into to, um, something further after we move along. But yeah, however it makes sense to you, to read it the easiest. Again, that's the um, metal is the element in the West. Number seven, it's the youngest daughter, which is a single female under 14, represented the mouth and the lungs. Okay, we'll go underneath that to the Northwest, which is the element of wood, the number six, and this is the father of the house. This is a married male man who has children. And it's represented by the head, as in the head of the house, head. There will be, um, if you're a woman and you're saying that you are the head of the house because it's only you, you're a single mom, you cannot, this doesn't represent you unless you have a sex change or this is a male. So you're a female uh, matriarch. You're not the head of the house in the male sense. So no matter what, it's still a male. Yeah, uh, number seven is the West, Alora. Number six is the Northwest. Oh, Django. Yep, sorry. Sorry. Okay. All right. And then the North, which is the bottom middle. It is the element of water, and it's the number one. This is the middle son. This is an unmarried man with no kids older than 16, single Mary, single um, male. And this is represented by the kidney and ears, kidneys and ears. <laughs> when do Friday start? I just saw you guys. Okay. Does anybody, you know what? I'm going to recap them really quick before we go on to the last one. So south is fire, the number nine. It is the middle daughter, which is a single female, unmarried, over 14, representing the eyes and the heart. Yes. Southwest is the earth element, mother of the house, which is a married female parent, number two. And that's representing the stomach, abdomen, and skin. Southeast is the element of wood, the number four. It is the oldest daughter, a married female, no children yet representing the butt and hips. The east is representing the uh, element of wood, the number three. It is the oldest son, which is a married male without children, representing the feet. Perfect. The west is metal, number seven. It is the youngest daughter, a single female under 14, representing the mouth and lungs. Northwest is wood element, number six. It is the father of the house. He is a married parent, representing the head, as in head of the house. Number six with that. North 
represented by number one and water element, is the middle son, who was a single male, unmarried, no kids, older than 16. And that represents the kidneys and the ears. And last but not least, we have the, the east. Northeast. No, northeast. Northeast, excuse me, northeast. This is represented by the element earth. And this is the youngest son, number eight. The youngest son is a single male under the age of 16. And he is represented by hand. I don't know. That's kind of funny. My hair? Hand. <laughs> oh. Yeah. I just thought of something probably gross. <laughs> Why the 16 and under kids or boys are represented by the hand. Could it be all the video games? Maybe. <laughs> Northeast. Wait, I'll yeah, Northeast is the one I just did. Yeah, ha ha, ew. <laughs> Northeast, Alora is the youngest son, element of earth, number eight. The youngest son is a single male under 16 and represented by the hand. In the middle of everything is number five. So the, the flying star number five goes right there in the middle. But that doesn't have any correspondence to people in the home. Yes. So I hope people here, Trav, I'm going to send you a picture right now of my Jake ass drawing one, a real fast one. Maybe that'll help people to see, get an insight. There you go. I sent it through messages. Oh no. I'm so scared. Okay. Um, now, once everybody has this basic setup, this is important. You're going to need this for your notes. Hopefully, Trav and I could um, produce quality ones that you guys can then get yourself and then have to use to study because you're going to want a good Bagua. But drawing them down helps you to remember them. So it's always good to write and map things out with your hands still. So it's important to get a compass reading of your house. You have to do that. Absolutely have to. Um, you can't just, yeah. My, yeah. Mine is probably hard for you guys to read. It's chicken scratch, but that's what it, you know, should read. So it's now this is the second part. There's four types of energy in feng shui. Okay. You're going to want to write this down. Want to write this down. It's called permanent or natal energy. And this represents the period time and the face facing reading, which is the compass reading and the time you moved in. But we've also said before, there's different schools of thought where they say, you wanna know the, the, the year the building was made and then the, the date the first occupants moved in. You can do that, but you, those are, that's gonna be more about the building itself. And the one about the person, the other people moving in, that's gonna connect with the people that moved in more than you. Um, you could do one when the building was built, but it's not going to relate to you the way it is when you, when you write the right, um, when you find the year you moved in, because that's like your beginning with the house. So it's just like in a birth chart or, um, a transit chart when you, um, in astrology, your birth, your connection with the birth of your beginning is when you get a good reading. I mean, you could do your mom's chart and still pick up things about you in it. But when you do your own chart, you get more of you. So it's kind of similar. If, if you look at the house as your mother, you could do a, a, a chart for the whole house and you'll show up in it. 
But you, to get a real good reading, you want to do your own chart when you came into the picture. Just same thing with astrology with this. So I recommend using the time period you moved in. And I'm going to give you a, a readout of, of that in a minute. There are um, nine periods in this cycle that represent a different number. And that number will give you your cycle period. We'll get into that in a minute. Anyway, so you got your permanent, which is the first type of energy. You've got your annual, which is it changes year by year, which is um, the flying stars there. Um, we've done that before, uh, Trev, on the chat where I gave everyone the flying stars for the year. Remember? Yeah, I do. Yep. Okay. So annually that changes. It actually changes more than that, but every year uh, the stars move to a new position, a new energetic um, number that represents something in your Bagua and it gets activated. So for example, you've got, um, let's say you, number two represents what? Southwest, the mother of the house, right? And number eight represents the young man in the house. Let's say you went to someone's home and you mapped out their chart and in the in the master bedroom, you got the combination of two and eight. You know that the, the female is having an affair with a younger male because it's, yeah, because it's the female mother of the house with this under, with this youngest son energy, the two eight combination in the master bedroom. So that sh shows affairs with an older woman or an older woman with a younger, younger man, Wait stuff a minute. like Wait. that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you said you go into the room and you see a two and an eight. How do you, how do you come up? No, with no. That? You map out their, you map out their Bagua. So once you map out their Bagua, this is by getting their, um, their time period of their house when they moved in. Mm -hmm. All right. So you'll get, um, which we're going to go in that in a minute. You get a number based on when you moved in. That number is going to give you a chart to put over the initial Bagua. So we've got our initial Bagua. That's how you tell which directions mean what in your house. Because if you moved in in 2007, that's period eight. But if you just moved in in, in 20, if you moved in to a home in 1984, that's period seven. So you're going to have different stars moving to different places, which are going to give you different numbers. If, does that make any sense to you? Uh, it makes a little bit more sense. I don't know how you okay. get the numbers, though. We're going to get into that. So it's this part is of the year, not the month. This is, well, this is the annual. Okay, this is an annual thing. This is based off your permanent natal chart is the one that we've already done. Um, you know, the, uh, the permanent anal chart is when you do, you take this Bagua that we've already done, right. And you implement that with your compass reading where your house is facing and the time period you moved in, this will give you the, the natal chart, the ascendant chart for your house. So the kind of energies that are going to be in your house from day one, right. Mm-hmm. And then you move into annual, which is all about the flying, flying stars, um, feng shui, which is an annual, the changing of the flying stars. Then you do monthly, then you do daily. But before we get into all of that, because it is very involved, there's all ton of steps. So I'm just going to start off with explaining the permanent part. I wanted to give the four types of energy there is. There's the permanent, the annual, the monthly, and the daily. But the first part we're getting into, because to move further would confuse everyone is the permanent and your natal, which you need to have know when you moved in to your house. So let me take another picture for you. Based on when you moved in, here we go. All right, I'm gonna send this to you. You'll get assigned a number. And that number is the period, the time period that you moved in. So someone that moved in to their home between 2004 to 2023, 
is an eight period. That's in period eight. So they would write down period eight and then they would write down their compass readings next to that for their house. You want to get very detailed with those compass readings. Did you, yeah, you got that right. Uh, what? The um, picture I just sent you. Okay. Got it? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. So, so this is what people's homework is. You need by based on this um, cycle cyclic period, find out. You should know when you moved into your house. I would think. Um, you know, write write that down. But you also need to do a, a very accurate compass reading of your home, out your front door, your side window, or your back door. Figure out what where your house is facing, what directions are what, what corners are what. You want to be as precise as possible. So you can get really effective, you know, um, placements. So you can really make some serious changes for the benefit. It's not enough to just overlay that basic Bagua that people do because not everybody's is the same. And let me, let me send you another picture. Okay. I mean, this is just the four types of energy. So I moved into this house during an eight period. Yeah. Same. The one I'm in now. So far, what does that mean? Does that mean that the northeast square of number eight is important? Or are you still getting to it? Yeah, I'm still getting to it. Hold on a second. Okay, so four types of energy. Yeah, yes, four types of energy. So the next next week, or not next week, the next time, um, I'm going to have my list of what all the numbers represent and mean, which I don't have them with me right now. Um, I don't have the right notebook. <laughs> Because each number represents something different and each number combination represents something different. We need to know that. That would be what's on the list for the next, the next time. But, yeah. what, but And then I'll have the annual information and we'll do the monthly information. Those two are going to be really involved. So we'll save the daily for the, the, the next one after. But um, if you guys can... Figure out, I'm sure you guys know when you moved in. Write that down. You've got this Bagua that we've already written out, so that's good. And then you need to have that compass reading. That is the first step in your permanent energy to find out, to, to map everything out from there. It's the natal chart for the house, basically. And then like the annual, the monthly, and the daily are like divisionals, transits and such. All right, hold on. There's, yeah, like there's certain, and then we're going to get into flying stars, which is a whole other detailed, it's fantastic information, but it's very detailed, just not as detailed as the Vedic, but still detailed. Like um, combinations of numbers two and three can bring abdominal complications. Combinations of five and eight or eight and five can be, um, sicknesses and general sicknesses or problems with the hands of, of the youngest son. Um, I already told you eight and two can show affairs with the younger underage person. Um, eight and seven could bring like kids that want to elope or run away.
Okay, hold on. All right. How should we? Let's pull her up. Yes. Me? Hmm. Did what were you saying? That's me. Yeah. Oh, why? You thought I called your name? Please don't ask me why. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so does everybody have their Bagua written out? Written out? I'm sure everyone. Does, there's nobody that has any questions about that. So, one, let me reiterate why we're getting into the feng shui, why we're doing another leg to the Vedic. It's because it's like a deeper dive into your fourth house. But it, it goes even deeper because it, yes, it, 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 it's from the house. It's all seen from the house and it represents the home. But then even within the home, you get a deeper read on everything else, right? So just like with tropical, it's the solar chart, right? The sun chart. But what it, but also in that sun chart, you got all the other planets. So you still get a deep read on, on all the other aspects. So it's, this is why we're, we're implementing the feng shui, because this is uh, a deeper fourth house investigation into your own life and active right now, how you can physically make a change to work with the energies that are moving around on your chart where we live and how we live and how we take care of our atmosphere makes a huge impact on our lives curve said you were in his dream and it dealt with butts <laughs> oh <clears throat> That seems to be a very common occurrence. Yeah. Not specifically with curve. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, what time is it? Perfect. Perfect. Do you have any questions for me? that you want to ask that I might not have that have been crossing your mind or that I might not have said last week you spoke on the importance of the working with the energy in your 10th house yes if you're someone who's going to be in the public eye and how working yes. in the 10th house would give you a uh, would make you a bit more well received. Yes. Now this time you're talking about the fourth house. Yes. And how using this bagua can sort of help you to define the energies present in your living residence because the fourth house represents home. Home. Yeah. And it's the axis of the, the fourth and tenth house is an axis. And they both influence each other. So if we want that 10th house activation, we also need to balance our fourth house, our home. We need to figure out where are we wasting energy, losing energy? Where are we in balance? And how can we uh, fix that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, plants. Plants are great. Plants are fantastic. Also, if you plant fake plants and dead plants are not good. Those are terrible. Get them out of your house. I know some people do have fake plants. Try to limit that as much as you can. Keep the dust off them. Depending on each person's house. It depends. See, that's the thing. With the Western Bagua, you could just say, oh, put it in wood or put it in the earth area. But it, it all depends on your Bagua. And that's what we're going to get into next time. Because um, each person's house is different, right? So what's good for, for one is not going to be good for all. Depending on what your Bagua says, Tree, will let us know which 
area will do good to have plants in. One thing that'll be good for anybody is the saltwater cures. They can be, you know, they can be implemented with anybody at any time. Those are the, um, the mason jars that you fill with salt, sea salt. You put five pennies on the top. You then fill it with water right to the salt line. And then you leave it in different spaces of your home. And you'll see some of them turn into huge monstrous <laughs> crystals. And that's because it's pulling in all this stagnant energy. Sha chi is what they call it. Sha chi energy. They pull it in and it turns into this like monstrosity. And other ones that you put out will have, they will have no changes because it's a clean space. So that really helps. Yes. When um, tree next, even if you're in an apartment, that's still fine. You can still do a bagua for your apartment. And then um, we could figure out, you know, come next, the next time, which is not next Friday, but the Friday after that with um, your period when you moved in and your compass reading. And then based off that, we will be able to tell you which places are better for your plants. Also, not the, no pointy plants. I know that might suck for people who love cactus, but cactus bring arguments. It brings spicy, hot, heated arguments. Um, you could maybe put some like uh, plants that have like a pointed leaf in the bedroom for passion, but that could also bring arguments. So you want to be careful. So rounded leaves are better. Rounded leaves and like red colors and pinks and passionate fiery colors are better in the bedroom because that's, you know, passion. Keep them out of the living room. Also, they say, um, they also say to have a kitchen in the Northwest of the house isn't good. Apparently it drains the money, which is the, the corner that represents the father of the house. I always think to myself, well, what if your kitchen, what do people do when their kitchens are there? <laughs> like they move in, there's nothing they can do about it. There's all kinds of um, like mirror things that they implement. There's different kinds of remedies, but um, it's, it's really good to have a understanding of the feng shui before you move into a new house. Because you can end up buying a house that has all the, the wrong placements. <laughs> yeah. And everyone actually has um, a better direction. Like their front door facing a certain way will do better in, for certain pe different people. So that's another implement that we can do based on your life path numbers and numerology. Um, if you have a door facing the east or facing the south or the west, you'll, you'll do better. Houses with, you know, doorways facing certain, certain ways. Um, I'm supposed to have one to the east. Mine is to the south. However, I do have a door to the east, thank God. So um, I'm supposed to be towards the rising sun for me. And then the house next to me, they're facing, their front door is facing the west. And there has been four deaths in this house there since I've lived here 15 years, four deaths in that house. Um, people move out constantly. There's just always something going on. And I'm like, people, well, the, fun, the feng shui in the house has to be off. <laughs> and I'm like, uh, the people moving in there must have like bad directional, like the, they just don't match with that directional um, space. And I see that uh, a lot of times, um, there's a most more uh, most often people seem to be a an eastern door. I see lots of people that I've read, lots of eastern doors because it's facing the um, the rising sun. So I'm not sure what uh, I haven't met anyone yet that would do well from the west. Anyone's chart that I have done actually, but I'm sure they're out there. Apparently, the house next door just isn't <laughs> jiving with anybody. Peace out, Laura.
Have a good night. Bye, Laura. Greetings, Matthew Watson. Yeah, I Greetings, set my Mandy Sherpa. Greetings, Pablo X69. Greetings, Steve Ivana. Oh, good. Your kitchen's northeast. Mine is northeast too, Tree. Thank goodness. Right? Also, leaky pipes represent money leaking out of the house. Man, we're going to get into it because there's all kinds of things. <laughs> like what if... About- What'd you say? You go ahead. I was going to say, when you're, when you're cooking, if your back is to an open door or a doorway, it represents a loss of energy, which um, another loss of money. And then like if a, if a sink is facing a window or a mirror, like, oh my God, there's a bunch. <laughs> what if the sink gets clogged or the toilet? Uh, not What if the sink or the tub gets clogged? Well, if it's like a long period thing that you haven't fixed, that's going to cause obstacles in your flow of money. It's really self-explanatory. If you think about water as a flow, right? A flow of money. So water uh, often represents money in the feng shui. So if any kind of flowing is blocked or stagnant or leaking, this is going to represent your income. And um, that's why they, they, people like to um, include water features to boost their income in the house. They'll put a water feature in the water area. But see, depending on the flying stars of the year, there might be a negative star in the water area. So you want to reduce the water that year. So you put a different element there. That's a whole other thing we're going to get into. But there's, there's all kinds of tips and tricks. And it's pretty amazing. Mad leaky pipes right now, but I have to wait till I get back home. Oh yeah, mad leaky pipes. Yes, if um, anything broken in the house, also get rid. Don't keep broken shit. Don't be the person that says, "But I'm going to fix it," unless you do fix it, like right then and there, because that will cause broken promises, broken relationships broken, broke in your pocket, broke, broken things bring more broken things. If you think of everything in your house as a magnet, it's going to bring more of that in a symbolic method, in a symbolic way. You want it to clear the clutter. You want to keep things. You don't have to have brand new shit, but just don't let your shit be broken or leaking. There's a, you know, when your home is clean and things are put together, there's just the feeling you have. Things just feel better. And there's a reason to that. Kick them, (laughs) haha. So I think that, um, have you tried anything personally with your uh, 10th house Virgo energies? Have you um, done any researching on it or digging into what Virgo means to you, Trev? Yes. Yes. How's it worked out? Well, I was using a lot of the energy on my TikTok. Yes. Oh, I saw that. And before they did the whole erase thing, but it was doing um, pretty good. Yeah, it was doing great. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, it was. Absolutely right. It was actually doing pretty great. A little too great. (laughs) Yeah, it's it's pretty it's spooky, right? When it when it happens, you're like, okay. Kept a Gemini, I would still be here, but no, I had to go Virgo. Yeah. Yeah. Which means I got to keep doing that, right? Yes, definitely. And Virgo is all about work, isn't it? Hard work. So now you got to do that hard work all over again. Oh, boy. Application is expensive. Yeah, it is. Yes. Duct tape will fix anything. 
There you go. But think about this. What's up, stuff dog? You, yeah. Hey, stuff dog. If you duct tape your pipes, right? They might, it, it, it might fix it for the time being, right? It might fix it. But it, is it a superficial fixing? So if you think about it, that's going to manifest in your own money. There's going to be a superficial, uh, temporary fix that might end up bursting later on. So it's, it's literally, um, you know, for time being, you could do what you got to do, of course. But remember, the longer you put stuff off and fixing them the right way, it, rep it, will, it will manifest in other areas of our life. Anything to do with water will represent our money. It, it will definitely affect the money. Bathroom, kitchen, anything that's leaking, dripping. Oh, and also keep your toilets down. Keep your lids down, especially when you flush them, not only because of the sanitary part of it. Um, it what happens when you flush the toilet, it sucks the air out of the room. It pulls it down like in a really long, straight motion, which like long hallways and long, straight roads, they say have sha chi built up energy. It's like when the energy goes real fast, 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 fast. And then it's like, it smacks hard at the end. Boom. That's why you have these really bad accidents where you have these really long stretches that all of a sudden turn real quick. That's sha chi energy because people that are not paying attention are on autopilot and they're just driving real fast that aren't paying attention. They'll be sucked into that and boom, smack into the end of the road or get in an accident because it's, it's, speeding everything up it's like a, a trap of energy that just in one of those spots what'd you say i had a car accident in one of those spots oh yeah there's there's a place like that here in cleveland called dead man's curve awful name yeah oh you know how many people have died over there that's why they started calling it that it is and it is a straight shot and then it's just like a sharp turn and all these big ass semis are speeding and shit and then Oh, it's terrible over there. There's always an accident there. And it's because of the Sha Chi energy. It's that straight. That's why when you walk down a, a long hallway, doesn't it feel eerie and like something's going to grab you from behind or something? You're like, ooh, you hurry up down the hallway. That's Sha Chi energy. It's a, it's a uneasy feeling because this sharp, fast energy is, is being shot down the aisle and nature is in, in spirals, you know, that nature's air and flow is in circles and spirals. It doesn't go straight for very long. And it's because there needs to be, you know, like a balance of the energy, but if it keeps going fast, it starts to build up, build up, build up, build up, and it makes you uneasy. Thanks, Prakriti, for all your wonderful pyrals and spirals and spatterns. Yes. Down to our fingertips. Absolutely. Yeah, sink is always leaking. Okay. Dirty closet and with a lot of clutter. Yeah, a dirty closet. First of all, what does the closet represent? It represents our subconscious, our mind, our hidden secrets, right? And if it's cluttered, you want to clear that out. Clear that out. It will, it might bring up some personal issues within yourself. Like if you clear out your basement, like when um, I warned my kids my husband we were cleaning out our basement and attic and everything i said we're going to probably have some tense tension here and there we're clearing a lot of stuff out of the house so we're going to have a lot of emotions happening so just be aware of it if you're aware of it you can you know dictate and um go around all the negativity you can recognize where it's coming from and quickly alleviate it but um, yeah, clear out the, clean out the closet. You know, the whole um, thing that you heard, just like Eminem song, clean out my closet. It's, it's a therapeutic thing. You want to literally clean your closet out and it will literally affect your subconscious and your mind. 
So it's something you would benefit from. Any kind of clutter is going to cause static and stress. Yes, you're welcome. A lot of animals. Well, that is it your house that's attracting a lot of animals or is it you, Godflow? Is that something that's always happened with you? You could be in an area where there's a lot of animals. So this is crazy. I don't know if I told you this. Yesterday, I was writing to somebody. Um, oh, yes. Yeah, someone on my Moldavate group was asked if they, if a bunch of little broken up Moldavite was more powerful than one big piece, one big chunk. And I jokingly said, if any, if I learned anything from Disney's Tinkerbell movie, it's that more pieces of the crystal presents more, um, more light and more energy. It's more powerful. Um, it's like uh, with organite, when you have the broken pieces of crystal, the more broken and small they are, the more edges and surface areas you have, which gives you a higher resonance, higher frequency. And as soon as I, I hit post or comment, the fucking bell on my wall rang. Now the bell is against the wall. It's not hanging from a, a door or nothing. Like it's against the wall. You have to literally like move it with your hand. And I was like, what the hell did, what just said? And I'm trying to, I'm jumping on the floor, trying to recreate it, trying to debunk it. Nothing. I'm like, okay, that's nuts. I was like, I was literally talking about Tinkerbell. <laughs> Messy. And the bell went off. Message. Recently, the string from my mold device broke. And I've had it for years and years. Hmm. Hmm. Feng Shui class. Yeah, I need to. Um. I need to do a little more digging into my uh, notes. I used to do Feng Shui a lot, but like I said, I I was doing a lot of the Western, and of course, now that I do the um, the Vedic, I have to find out the sources of everything and classical it makes so much more sense and why you just can't overlap any old i that always made that always seemed weird to me they used to say situate your front door in the south no matter what what direction it's in and that didn't make sense to me I'm like why but that's not really not everyone's front door is in the south i don't understand why they would do that basically they were using the inside space as a reading instead of the using the actual outside space and the inside space, you know, like they, I don't know. It doesn't make sense to me. My front door is in the South. Yeah. Mine is too, but some people's front doors in the East or in the West or in the North. So yeah. people across the street, their front doors in the North. Exactly. That's their karma though. Yeah. Exactly. If you live in a messy roommate, does that affect your energy in any way? Like only their room of the house? Okay, so living with messy people does affect your energy. However, are you? Oh, yes, it does. Think about this. When you move to a certain neighborhood, you can feel the difference, right? You could feel when you move into a beautiful, nice, oh, rich, hoity toity neighborhood. It feels good when you're out there feels nice everything feels bougie and then you move somewhere where it's not maybe your house is put together but the neighborhood's just like ah man but the best you can do is at least keep your space right so yeah our roommates and people that live with us do affect it they do so there's there's a whole method of purging and in, which includes people sometimes and when you start working on yourself and your own environment, I'll tell you this, your own little space, you start working on your own little space more and you start balancing it out and feeling happy about it and 
and good about it, more feelings of goodness will come to you. More opportunities to expand that outward will come to you. A possibility to move to where you are more in alignment with will come to you. In the west, northwest, like the room of the house. Yeah, because um, like people, ha even people with that have side by sides and stuff like that, and you got to share parts of the yard and share parts of the garage. It, it does have a effect, but you can only do so much for your space. Okay, I'm just checking the comments to see if I got everyone's questions. Homeless and compassion. Okay. I was trying to find my um, guided meditation. It, the one that um, leads you towards a specific path and based on what you pick, there's a reading for it. Mm -hmm. I'm having a damn hardest time finding where it's at. This is what this is from where? It's a guy kind of like the, you know, how we did the the mandala last time. How mm -hmm. I it's something similar, except it's more of a it's a meditation. So it'll be like you see it in your mind. And then I basically I ask question. I ask questions and then I have you make choices and then I write you write down your choices and based on your choices. They represent something that's happening with you in that moment, something that's going on in your life. It's 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 another kind of reading, but it's it's a psych um a psychology type trick. It's it's something that's part of um uh art therapy, it's an art therapy technique, it's another one, but it has it's a guided meditation technique. But every time I look up the guided meditation techniques that I have written in my no, it's, it's the wrong, it's not the right one. And unfortunately, I, it's leading me towards ones that are not correct. I'm still trying to find it because I do believe you guys would enjoy it. There's one where you, you're you led to a path in the forest and, the, and you look down and, and there's a box and what's in the box and what color is the box, stuff like that. And based on what you tell me at the end, I tell you what all that means. It's pretty cool. Hmm. Yeah, that sounds like it would be fun to do. Yeah. Yikes. Interesting, interesting. Now you mentioned that there was something that was coming on the 20th, but we were going to save that for the next discussion. Yeah, we'll get into it deeper, but that's Jupiter is moving into Danishta. So this is a very good placement for Jupiter. Um, for us, you know, this is when um, Jupiter is all about the fame and the money. It's the wealth, you know, and not Jupiter, but Danishta is. And Jupiter is all about expansion. So it's going to be a good day. It's from, the, it's, it's from January, I mean, July 20th till August 10th. So um, that's a good stretch for it to be there. That's going to be a good time for us. Although. You started on this project. Yes. Well, they're still in retrograde, but it's still going to be, I think uh, people are going to be getting money here again soon. 
probably a stimulus will be coming soon. I see definitely because the things that were happening back in April, I think it's April, are going to be happening again. March, April, April. Yeah, around that time. So there'll probably be money um, coming in for a lot of people. A stimulus. I think there's supposed to be another stimulus of some sort happening or that was already promised that's coming. That'll probably come around that time. People should have gotten, most people should have gotten their taxes by now, I would hope. But they say by the end of uh, September for that. Anyways, yeah, it's supposed to be, a, um, it's going to be a good time to make money and for people like us who work in the public. So it'd be a great time to put something together. But remember, it's something that we've already been planning on because it's still Saturn retrograde and he won't let anything new happen. It can't be new. It's got to be something that we've already been talking about, already been planning, already been working on because he will step in the way of anything that's new. Something thought up now. Jeez Louise. Yeah. I guess because what I'm doing is it's an old idea, but packaged in a new way. I'm getting like mixed, like mm -hmm. bursts of creativity when I push for it. But other than that, lately it's been that blah. Yeah. Which, Yeah, I yeah. Hmm. Neon light. Yeah, you'd be surprised. You know, you know what's interesting is that um the astrology and astrology type science, like the feng shui and palm tree is real similar too. You, you literally read the whole entire body in someone's hands. Like it's not, I know people, you know, think that reading palms is like, uh, bullshit, you know, because of the people that are out there that, that scam people, but the body, uh, the lines on the hand are linked to the brain directly. And, you can read what's going on in someone's life in their hands because it's a, it's, it's all right there. Physi physically, emotionally, it's all lined up literally on your hand. It's just another form of a chart. You can get, we can go into that eventually too. There's a whole chart on your hand, on each hand. There's so many levels and layers to knowing the self. Yes. Well, I think that about brings us to a certain point. So I think if everybody um, gets their compass reading and based on um, the time period they moved in, write that information down, keep it in your notes for two weeks from now. And then in two weeks from now, we'll go in into what the numbers mean, um, your time period, how you map out your, your, um, natal bagua chart and how you read it and then of course by then we'll get into all the new planetary alignments because we'll by then it should be close if not almost july 20th right mm -hmm. yep so we'll talk about all of the ins and outs of what's been happening in the, in the skies above And then hopefully um, with this, you guys already, you know, when you talked about the 10th house, hopefully you've been trying to implement for those who work with the public, implement your 10th house. And then we're going to work on the fourth house, the other part of the axis. And that's what we're doing with the feng shui. Apologies. 
puzzle being completed. Yes. Pieces and pieces and pieces. Yeah. Always so much to do, Kristen. Yes. No, I know. I know it. But that worked for me as well. Yes, a roommate situation. No matter where you're at, even if you had a little closet room, you could feng shui that to the best of your ability. But your surroundings are always going to affect you, including your neighbors, including your neighborhood, including your roommates. I know that sucks. But first, if you start with you, first with your space and what your space means and how your space feels and put yourself, take yourself to places that you enjoy being. Drive through the neighborhoods that make you feel good. Be there often, in fact. Drive through them often and let the people in that neighborhood see you there and see you there often because then they're going to believe you're supposed to be there. Oh, they, they recognize you. So that helps pull your energy in there. They recognize that car. It's always over here. Oh, they must live nearby. So a good way to start, you know, expanding to your energy so you can maybe come out of the spaces you're in that are not um, ideal, you know, is try to put yourself in places as much as you can that make you feel good. Even if that means driving there every night, whatever you have to do, but you make your space that you sleep in enjoyable, make it bring lots of light into it if you can light is real important light and air and brighten it up make it feel good for you and that will get you started in the realm of balancing your feng shui pay attention to the places you visit not everything deserves your energy if you have to drive a little bit longer to go to a, the, the better store, maybe, maybe it's worth it. This is what I do. I, I don't, you know, when I want to go to, um, I have a giant Eagle. I guess I probably know what that is. It's like a basic grocery store, but it's, eh, I don't like it, but the whole foods like two towns over. I, I, I love it over there. I love that space. So I drive two towns over because I just feel better there feels good. I come out of there feeling good about my purchases. I don't feel like I'm stressed out or people in the line annoyed me. So go to places that make you feel good. That also affects your feng shui. Be in places that just make you feel good. gracious mm -hmm. yes got ninety three yeah in in nicer neighborhoods they are not they're not wearing masks all the time. They are less fearful. You do have, um, you do have some, uh, though, that are just some neighborhoods that they get a kick out of, you know, virtue signaling and fighting for a cause, shit like that. So you get some of those neighborhoods. But, um, yeah, I mean, just being in places that make you feel good, even if you don't live there, just being there as much as you possibly can, it, it helps to pull in more of that energy. 
and I hate using the word energy all the time, but it's the only thing that you can explain it. More of that resonance, that match, that frequency match. Oh, you know, Giant Eagle, the Wandering Sage? <laughs> Are you from Ohio? Oh, Pittsburgh, okay. Yeah, you're close to us. Cleveland, Ohio. Actually, I'm in Lakewood. Things you have to. You got a reading from Vic? And how was it, Tree? You know what I like to do is hear everyone's different perspective on things. Each astrologer that I have seen, they have each one of them will have a different perspective on the same like nakshatra and it depends you know it's based on um the mythology but some nakshatras have multiple stories behind them and so some will pick one story some will pick a different story and so it, and because there's like four padas sometimes they're like leaning towards one area of, of the nakshatra so you get uh some different a little different insights course based on each astrologer and to the next chapters but i like to listen to them all because i feel like i get a a um a well-rounded understanding a big understanding i was okay it was okay did was it um did he talk to you or was it all like written out Something I'm seeing, and I understand why, <laughs> is there's not very many astrologers that do uh, like reading readings. Not like I thought. No wonder I was like killing myself before doing way too much. That often but seems I, to be our problem. We have it in our minds to over deliver. Yeah. And sometimes that's not even what the, you know, the client wants. <laughs> exactly no i know so now I've, I've i've learned to break things down a little bit precise this is the specific because then you can give me more specific and detailed on one area or a few areas not it is it is too vast and huge to go it's it's lots of work it's days of work it's days of work it's so many charts to read so many things to explain especially when someone doesn't have any idea yet some people not like this group, but some people that come to me, they don't have no idea, none. They don't know what's going on. So I have to first give them a little bit of the schooling on what all this shit means. And so it's, it's, it's just not probable. Hence why it's a good idea to take that and break it down into manageable steps, right? Yeah. So take the price and split it up as well. If we got this big complex thing that the customer can't even appreciate because they don't even know all the details maybe we can break it into smaller chunks at different price yeah. points yep that they can purchase what they can accept that way wouldn't yeah. be as much work for you and it won't be overwhelming to them exactly and it's worked very nicely since it was written but a tropical sidereal mix yeah that's what he does which was interesting because it was fully on point i was just expecting a bit more of a description yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm not. Yeah, I'm not sure what he sent you, but I do know that he mixes. Um, he uses Vedic science on tropical placements. That's what he does. 
But yeah, I, I, whenever he does break down things, whenever he does readings or when he does them online, at least it's, it's brief. He goes into mythology and I love, he knows like the details and the mythology. And I love all that. I love to learn all that from him. But when I've, um, he went live the other night and was doing like readings on Rahu and K2 type thing. He was, and it, it, it was accurate, but you're right. It's, it wasn't, I guess we go in deep on, we go in deep here. We go into like many details and expansive about things. So I think maybe that's, that's why I just, I'm learning that we give a lot because I'm, I'm, I'm watching what the other ones, I'm looking up what the other ones are doing and how they're doing it. Yeah. And they're charging for what we're doing. <laughs> they're charging a lot for what we're doing. So. Yeah. There's that. And then there's also like that balance yeah. between being somebody who knows a lot and dealing with an audience where you really don't know you know what I'm saying? If the majority of the audience knows a lot as well or knows like really little. So it's yeah. like, you really can't win as far as delivering the right amount. So it's like, sometimes what I try to do is try to make it as broadly understandable, but then you get people who are like, you know, can we get to some more advanced stuff? And then you got people yeah. who are like, hey, this is perfect, more of this. So it's like always a balance of how yes. much you deliver at what levels. Absolutely. And you got people who are delivering what we're delivering and uh, charging quite a bit. But a thing to remember also is there's always people like us coming into the chain and moving up the chain, right? Some people give up at this point. Some people give up before us. Some people yeah. give up at the next step. But those people, they were here at one point until they learned, you know, maybe I should charge for this. Yes, <laughs> Which exactly. Is this point, you know? Yeah. Absolutely. It's a process. Yeah, you gotta get yeah, because you gotta get comfortable. That's it. for me. I I'm like, you know, I have a. It's much easier to deliver to do the work once and then deliver it out to people. That's why the apps. That's why the apps are so popular, and some of these apps are giving better readings than some of these people do. Mm -hmm. But the problem is with the the the, the thing with the Vedic is. There's too many variables for the computer to give a full accurate reading. You can get a good one, a good close basic reading, but there's like all kinds of variables that it can't take into account because it's a computer. It can only go, do so much. Eventually, hopefully it can do better, but. Um, that's perfect. Cause that's a perfect yeah. opportunity, which means you can offer the next level of service, which is yeah. human element. Yeah, exactly. If the person wants that, then there you are to provide it. Absolutely. Yeah. When you really, the thing is, is when you want a, a really good deep reading, that's going to take some days. That's just the bottom line. Why do you think it takes Claire Nocti month or two months to put together one video on one nakshatra? Because it's a lot. It's a lot. And then if you want a really deep reading on yourself, either you've got to be willing to wait a while for the person to do it. And it's going to take them a while if they're willing to do all that, mm -hmm. which, you know, and what kind of, you know, I'm talking like, well, she does like one or two nakshatras in one video, not like the whole chart, you know? So it, it could be, um, really you can dive really deep into one part of your chart and really good and amazing read you can i think nakshatra readings are, are can be amazing can be so on point and worth it that's why i give that's why that's what i was giving in the first place just um giving people a chance to get an, a deeper nakshatra reading as opposed to just like an overview of, a, of the natal so I think you get them. Yeah, I'm sorry. Go ahead. That somebody who, say, for example, hypothetically, I do a service for somebody for opening their kundalinis, open up their chakras. Mm -hmm. And they say they feel something or whatever. And then you get another person who hires me to open their kundalini chakras, but they're also working to uh, do that within themselves. They're doing yoga, they're studying, they're practicing, and they ask, mm -hmm. you know, for some help. 
Who do you think is going to get the best result? Obviously, the one who is doing the additional yes. work. So I wonder, when doing cards for people and readings for people and stuff like that, I wonder if a person who is actively engaged in understanding the elements of their chart, uh -huh. they actually benefit more than a person who just buys it. Of course. Oh, yeah. And that's what I try to tell the people. So I wonder if the actual, uh, the, the, the best product to deliver is maybe teaching some of the basic elements, yep. not just like to give a man, teach a man to fish, whatever, but because when they do get the reading or get a reading from anyone else, yes, it understand it better. Someone who's just buying stuff. Right. And that's why, that's what I tell everybody. They have to have a, a knowing. That's why I'm teaching because it, if I just come to a brand new person, half of the words I'm speaking are a different language anyways. So they're like, what does that mean? What is that? There's, you got to teach people everything about what you're saying first and then give them the reading. I have found the people that are in this group that I uh, connect with and do a little bit of readings for, they understand way better that I don't have to catch them up on as much at all. They get it. They know. Okay. Yep. I understand. And they get a better understanding than someone who is brand new, who has no clue who asked the, se the same question seven times in a row. So it's a more pleasant experience for you as a teacher, as a knowledge provider. So in a way, Hmm. It's a lot better when you get to, uh, I guess, choose your customer or choose your client. Yeah. So maybe there should be some kind of systemized process where you teach people the fundamentals and gradually get them to the point where if they do want to get a reading from you, number one, you won't have to do as much overwhelming work because they'll yeah. be able to do to carry some of that load, you know? Yeah, they'll be able to understand what's being said to them. It's probably about time for you to teach a Vedic, Vedic astrology course. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Bye, Mar. Peace out. Peace, Mar. I'm going to peace out too, Kristen, because. Yes, going same. On 48. I am ready to close. Turn around to your neighbor and say, neighbor, neighbor, I'm doing my neighbor. <laughs> God is good all the time and all the time. God is good. God is good. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. And also with you. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So for the next two Fridays, have your know when you moved in to your house and have your compass readings. And then we'll go from there. Yes. All right. And we'll talk it we'll talk about the fourth house next time as well. This is the whole reason we're getting into the feng shui is the fourth house. So so this supplementary material helped you to get first a framework for the Bagua. And this relates to your fourth house in your Vedic chart. So you just get a little framework to see how this kind of plots out. And, you know, of course, it doesn't mean much to most of us right now because we haven't applied it yet, but it does relate to the fourth house. And like I said, we're getting a framework the next piece of this puzzle will be filled in next time we get together so that we will really be able to see how this connects to your physical dwelling place and also the energetic landscape, etheric patterns and whatnot. Yep. All right, so does anybody else have any questions, comments, blessings?
God flow says, I am Mercury fourth house. Uh oh. Hey, that's a great placement. What is my fourth? My fourth house is Pisces. Pisces. I don't have anything in that house. Yeah, but what sign is it? Me? Yeah. Oh, Pisces. Pisces. Mine's Capricorn. Mm -hmm. Oh, boy. Oh, Isn't your... Were both of your parents or just your dad in the Navy? My dad was in the Army. Army, Army. Okay, okay. I was in the Navy. You were in the Navy. Well, that makes... That is nuts. My ex-husband was in the Navy, too. <laughs> Let me guess. No, I'm not even going to guess. <laughs> no. We'll have to talk about that next time. Or next time we and I talk, I mean. But, all right, well, I'm going to get yeah, Pisces, our sweethearts. Our birthday is a Monday. All right, well, everybody, I will see you in two weeks thanks for coming thanks for joining and um see you next time all right peace out peace everybody thanks for coming i hope you learned a good bit rello torrent says he learned a lot appreciate you guys thank you tune in next time be on the lookout because look i am making an app and it's not going to be Anything that's going to have any limitations, I'm letting it all out. I got my system figured out. I got my five branches of magic that everything falls into, and I'm teaching it to anybody who wants to learn it. There's going to be exercises. There's going to be daily assignments if you choose to keep up with it. Because the whole point for this thing is to establish a framework to be able to uh, approach any magical system, right? Whether it's chaos, magic, whether it's to anything, anything to take any approach, any book, and be able to have a framework to use it in, right? And if you wanna get serious about it, the app's gonna have daily exercises you can do, daily affirmations, daily meditations. You can track your reading, you know, how much you read and all that stuff. It's gonna have a lot. So if this sounds like something that you wanna be a part of, you wanna support, you wanna be integrated with, keep your eyes open because we're getting this done soon. Kristen said we're about to have some Jupiter in Denista, is it? Yep. Yeah, on the 20th yeah. all right so I'm, I'm getting this to work i got a lot of offers for um some different programmers who um you know they're giving me some different prices different options and whatnot so this is going to happen very soon it's not going to take two years it'll happen very soon so give me your positive energy for this because this yeah. is bigger than me bigger than you know what i'm saying this, this is not a little ego project Occult science okay. is the technology of the future, right? And this right here is going to establish a framework for regular people to be able to use this technology, which means the next generation will be able to, you know, have spiritual technology as a commonplace thing. So this is big. This is big. Appreciate all you guys. I appreciate your support. And... Tune in next time, because this ain't going to stop. Peace. This is TK Trav, a.k.a. Travis Mages, here with LBX777. I love you guys. Peace.